Owen Galway and Sligo to really, I suppose, talk about this particular uh, initiative, which I'll come on to in a few minutes. We've only waited 15 years for this, but finally it's here. We have our own plan, our own roadmap. So just a little bit about the Alliance and just to reflect a little bit over the last few years. The Alliance, as you know, is a not-for-profit organisation that spun out of a research project in DIT. And the whole idea of the Alliance was to try and sort of promote digitization in, the, in a sector that's not traditionally uh, modernized. You know, if you compare it to other sectors, there's probably one other industry uh, more efficient than us, uh, or less efficient than us, and that would be, the, uh, would be the fishing industry. You've probably heard that before. But construction has a long way to go. And the announcement by the Irish government in recent months of their commitment to BIM, also the rollout of the roadmap by the National BIM Council, I think should be applauded. And I think it's well overdue. A um, little bit about uh, um, 2017 for CETA. It was a big year. Uh, we hosted a very successful Smarter Building series in Dublin. We had an IT manager series. And of course, we had the CETA Bin Gathering International Conference in November. Uh, some of you may well have been there or may well have watched some of the presentations online. Um, the gathering is starting to be now recognized internationally as a signature event in the digital construction space globally, which is great. And a number of the presentations uh, and papers are now going to be published in formal international journals. Uh, I believe personally that the Alliance has made a significant contribution to this roadmap. I'll talk more about it again say, in a second. Uh, because I really enjoyed working with Barry McCauley. Uh, over the last few years on the BIM Innovation Capability Program for Ireland. So what that sought to do was to look beyond the shores of Ireland and look at other jurisdictions and what they were doing in their countries to digitally transform their sectors. Bring that together into one coherent global BIM study, a local BIM study, and then present that to the National BIM Council. And I'm glad to say that they took a lot of what we suggested in this plan. Um, many of you will have the pack there and you will see that the Alliance is active in the training space. Uh, for example, the CETA skill net is one of the longest established skill net networks now in the country. Almost 10 years of successful recurring grants <laughs> to CETA. And what's interesting to see actually this year is some new programs coming into skill net for example, lean construction. So the conversation between the lean community and the BIM community in Ireland really needs to become one conversation as we go forward. Also, data analytics is creeping in there on our training program, and of course, BIM. But also the idea of in-company training is very important. And for those of you who don't know, companies can avail of up to 20% discount on these, these training courses, but also students who are studying in, DI, in colleges across the country who are self-financing themselves can also get discount on their costs. So the SkillNet program is there to help uh, all of industry and indeed in many of the student communities. Um, in December the on December the 17th last year, this document was released by the National BIM Council. Within a week of it being released, the CETA board met prior to Christmas, and we decided that we would align our next four years of activities to this roadmap, because we suddenly had a mandate. It's not a mandate as such, but suddenly we had something we could work with and work uh, alongside. So. We quickly set about designing a digital transition series that's running now in Dublin. Six events, six core messages, and by way of an example, on the 1st of March in Dublin, we have the Chief Information Officer, Barry Lowry, speaking. Um, we met Barry last Monday week. He's very interested in the programme. He's going to be saying some nice things about the program and maybe some advice as to he, what he has from other sectors. But also we've assembled quite an impressive leadership panel at the event. All of the chief executives, general secretaries of all the professional institutions, many of the senior civil servants who are working 
on uh, have responsibility in the built and engineering environment will be sitting on this panel and will be asked for a collaborative commitment to this plan. So I'm just going to take you through this plan. Now I just want to say that this, uh, these are my observations, my personal observations. This is not the National BIM Council. I'm only one of, two, of 10 or 11 people that sit on this council. I sit there as secretariat of the council and also as an academic from DIT. But so these observations are not uh, uh, perhaps uh, uh, haven't been ratified necessarily by the council, but they are my observations nonetheless. Have any of you seen this roadmap? Have you downloaded or looked at it? Okay. Um, I think the roadmap is quite aspirational. It sets out at the start of the, of the roadmap um, quite a vision for 2021. I mean, that's only four years away. The idea that we're going to have rapid planning, you know, we're going to be working routinely with open 3D format single shared modules, models, that design teams will move from paper to silos and so on and so forth. I'm not going to talk about level zero to level three BIM. Many of you know what this means already. But it's good, I think, that they have set this bar for the industry. Um, I don't know if you've, any of you have read any of the recent publications like, you know, the Construction Manager magazine, the CIOB magazine. Off-site construction is huge now. You know, in the UK, the biggest hotel in Europe is, was built, 95% of it was built in a factory, and they assembled it in something like two months on site in London. So off-site is definitely important. And of course, the whole idea of moving from where we are maybe now, where, where do you think we are? Level zero, level one? Ireland I'm talking about now. If you take Middle Ireland, SMEs, that's really where they are. Moving to level two, moving to level three, where we work with collaboratively with these tools. And of course, the whole big issue of smart data and smart cities. Myth or reality? I think it's reality in many respects. This was a study carried out two years ago by KPMG of the top 100 global construction professionals and major owners around the world. And you can see there that BIM, for example, is huge, is hugely important for them. And the idea that they're routinely now remotely monitoring sites, working with drone technologies, robotics, this technological, I suppose, um, revolution in construction is happening as we speak and will continue to happen. Many of you will have heard the announcement last week in Sligo of um, Project Ireland 2040. I'm not going to go through the details, but again, another tonic uh, for the industry. You know, significant investments in infrastructure, you know, institutes of technologies coming, becoming technical universities, so on and so forth. But what was really interesting that I picked out of this, this was this announcement of a 500 million disruption technologies fund that will help drive collaboration between research, education and industry. There could be an opportunity for our industry and for this National BIM Council to maybe tap into that 500 million. You know, you, we only want <laughs> a half a percent, <laughs> one percent of that. Wouldn't it be fantastic if we could do that? By the way, the roadmap was issued without any funding. Bit of a, a bit of a conversation stopper. So that search is going on at the moment. Just a little bit of, about the, the, the BICP and the Building Information Modeling Report we carried out in 2017. This is a passage from that that was lifted and put into the roadmap. That the roadmap really came out of consultation, expert input, research evidence that, had, that needed strong leadership, standardization, procurement, skills and training at its core. So we believe that we had uh, a lot to play, uh, you know, a lot to, to contribute to the roadmap. Barry and I collated many case studies. We talked to many of the colleges around the country uh, and we interviewed tens, if not 20, 30 people in the industry, senior people in the industry, and we were able to feed that back to the council. Now, so apologies for the quality of this image, but back in 2017, we worked with, have any of you heard of Bilal Sukar? 
He's based in Australia. He's what's called a change agent. Um, he's quite a significant individual in the BIM space globally. He's worked with many, many countries. And he worked with uh, the BICP team to see where we were in Ireland in regard to BIM. Now, on the left-hand side, again, apologies for the quality of this, but it did show that we were mainly focused back then on technology. In other words, creating the model, some collaboration and some integration. But there wasn't any real um, diffusion of process and policy in Ireland in regard to BIM adoption. We also concluded with the study we did that it was a mainly passive approach. You know, we were observing the UK. We were observing Scotland. We were observing what was happening in Northern Ireland, in mainland Europe. We were encouraging, and CETA was playing a big role in making people more aware of the value proposition for BIM. But active and assertiveness wasn't there. In other words, the idea that we would incentivize SMEs, the idea that we would educate our, you know, the next generation um, in a structured way uh, wasn't there to any great extent. And the big gap that we found, and again, bottom right here, is that there was no policy, there was no statement of intent at that time. But what came along close afterwards? We had the OGP statement of intent, you remember that? And also we had the, the roadmap. So when we go back now, prior to Digital Construction Week 2018, and we do our digital transition survey in 18, I think we'll find that these figures will shift. And I think we'll, these 20 experts that we surveyed will start to see that Ireland's becoming more active, becoming more assertive, and at last the government have made a commitment to digitization for this sector. So this is our roadmap. And it was interesting at the last National BIM Council meeting, many of you know David O'Brien of the OGP, he said, now that the roadmap is out, we have to implement it. So the beast has out, is now out. And in this roadmap, you'll see that there's gateways and actions and events to be carried out throughout 2018 to 2021. So we need to be seen to do it. So we need to hold the government account to deliver these. On the top right hand corner there, you'll see uh, some quite bold targets. You know, 20% reduction in project delivery time. 20% increase in exports and 20% reduction in capital costs. The message from the Irish government is we're not going to accept in the future claims from companies that are caused by the design and construction team themselves. We expect, they expect, project costs to come under greater control. So, and that, I think that's a message from clients as well now in the future, that clients expect, for a price, their project to be built at a, at a, at a, with a greater degree of cost control. So now that we have, now that the problem is we need to implement this roadmap. Some of you might have seen this diagram in the roadmap. It's quite interesting. Okay, it's a theoretical approach to it. But if you think about it, if we want to change the construction industry fundamentally, We've got to have all of these five components in place. Number one, we have to have a vision. I think we have that. We can take that one off. We have to have skills, incentives, resources, and an action plan. So I don't think the second line applies here. We've got the vision. Do we have the skills, do you think? Now, as a quantity surveyor, I can tell you we don't. Quantity surveyors do not have the skill set at the moment, I believe, to work routinely with BIM. I can tell you that as an educator. Architect te technologists, yes, architects, who knows. But we're getting there. So one of the purposes, as you know, in the roadmap is to have an education and training um, pillar. Secondly, there needs to be incentives. Do you think they're there? Are there enough incentives for SMEs to take up technology? I don't think so at the moment. Do we have resources to run this roadmap or to develop this roadmap? I can tell you we don't. And do we have an action plan? 
that's been put in place. Many of you might have read in the roadmap that they're going to take the first six months to organize their affairs and to put their leadership platform in place. So let's look at some of the guiding principles of this roadmap. And what's great about this roadmap is it's ours. We're not looking at the UK now. We're not looking at Scotland. It's our plan. So let's make of it what we can. Firstly, collaboration is at the core of all we need to do in the future. For example, we need to engage educators, research, industry, government. They need to engage more in a formal capacity. Secondly, Ireland needs to develop its own guidelines for BIM adoption. Yeah? Do we have any? Not really. I know the SCIF have done some documentations. I know the RAI have produced a BIM execution plan. But the National BIM Council needs to commission the creation of guidelines. OK, we can use those guidelines from, from examples from overseas, but we need to develop our own. Secondly, we need to educate the next generation and our current workforce working more digitally. This is the big issue. Thirdly, or fourthly, we need to support industry going forward. There isn't a support program necessarily for BIM for other than the Enterprise Ireland clients at the moment that I can see. I've said to the council, if you've got three main KPIs, reduce cost, time, and increase exports, someone's got to monitor that. We've got to set the benchmark, and then we've got to monitor it. So it's got to be evaluated going forward. And it's also important that this roadmap is sustained, that it doesn't just drop off the edge of a cliff in 2021, that we continue the work. So I keep going back to the council and saying, this is what you've written into the document, so we need to do it. But collaboration is at the core of all we do. If we want to get to level two, level three, we need to collaborate. Now, just a little bit about each of the pillars. How am I doing on time? OK, a little bit about the pillars. Now, these uh, pillars, what's really interesting is the, the, the leadership one. There is a National BIM Council currently in place, and you'll see you'll recognize some of the logos there. Um, but at the moment, the council are reorganizing uh, their affairs. They're bringing in more people. For example, the National Standard Authority of Ireland have been invited to get involved, the HEA, OPW, and so on and so forth. Um, but the overarching vision of the leadership pillar is to facilitate the formation of a national BIM center of excellence with a focus on driving digital transformation. I don't know where that's going to sit. But isn't, that's a great message, isn't it? That perhaps it might, well, perhaps it'll be a centre, but it'll have nodes out to all of the regions sitting in the various universities and IOTs around the country. That would be fantastic. In other words, a, a centre for everyone. Not a physical centre, but a, a, a virtual centre. So what they're doing is they're looking at that. So we've looked at um, any of you that might have been at the first seat event. We, did you hear about the Scottish? We had the uh, Construction Scotland Innovation Centre were over. So we're looking at their model. You may be aware that in the UK, they've set up a new centre for digital built Britain in the University of Cambridge, four and a half million sterling funding. Um, and they're also spending the next six months looking, they've got what's called a bridgehead programme where they're looking out and consulting with industry and academia as to what their areas of focus should be. The council will be looking to identify a suitable person or executive to lead the programme and so on and so forth. And commission the implementation task group. So what hopefully will happen is a small task group will form. There will be seconded maybe from industry or academia to work on driving this roadmap, like they did in the UK under David Falk, and like David also did in Scotland. And of course, they want us to continue collaborating internationally. So that leadership platform, what I can say about it now is that it's been reorganized. And next week in Dublin, on the 1st of March, we're going to have a leadership panel, some of those leadership people may well be on this council. So Anya Myler of the SCSI, Caroline Spillane, Engineers Ireland, 
Sarah Ingall, ACI, you know these names, yeah? These are senior people. Um, we recently met with the NSAI. They're really enthusiastic about this uh, recommendation of strengthening and supporting Ireland's commitment to open BIM. Um, you know that S NSAI have a mirror committee for SEN, TC442, and they feed into the whole SEN structure and the ISO. Um, there is a UKI Building Smart chapter, but sadly Ireland are not part of that conversation at the moment, but hopefully there'll be funding put forward so that we can start to uh, involve ourselves more uh, with it building smart. And of course, any of you that read the roadmap will have seen that there's all sorts of plans to build online toolkits. NSEI would likely certify BIM <coughs> going forward. Uh, they feel as if they, 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 they can do that. And so, again, um, There'll be a meeting uh, in May, I think it's May, uh, on standardization. Education and training, this is obviously one that's very close to my heart. Um, the idea that we'll develop a consistent, seamless and coherent digital experience for our students to help grow industry capacity and maturity, fantastic. And by the way, these were all ideas we pulled out of different plans, or uh, Canadian plans, Scottish plans, UK plans, yeah? So, there is a group in Ireland called BAFI. It's the BIM Academic Forum for Ireland, and we're going to meet on the 28th of this month. And we're going to hopefully elect a chair and write to the council as to how we think this should be delivered. Yeah? Um, but people like the HEA, Department of Education and Science, Solar Skill Nets, and so on, will need to be consulted. But the idea that we could have a learning framework uh, for digital competencies in Ireland in third level would be fantastic, yeah? I think we can deliver it. The reason why we can deliver it easier than the UK is that we're small, we're agile. We've only got nine or 11 colleges to agree this. The UK is huge, it's a big, it's a big ship to turn. So I think there's a great opportunity there. This is not uh, something that we have any control over. This is really the Office of Government Procurement. Now, many of you who know or have met David O'Brien will know that he's working very hard to bring his team together in Dublin and from around the country. He's looking to bring in technical people from the different departments to work on developing guidelines. And you'll know that there's a stratified, banded approach to BIM adoption. Um, but I think we just have to be patient with this one. David will get to the... get. Um, We'll start to focus uh, on this a lot more. And uh, um, I think the LGMA, the Local Government Management Agency, will need to be actively involved. Uh, but we keep uh, um, our ears out on that one. OK, a little bit about the government message. They say in the roadmap that they're going to support SMEs for digitization. Many of you might have heard of the Enterprise Ireland um, funds for BIM. Um, but they're mainly restricted to SMEs who are, and uh, large companies who are clients of en Enterprise Ireland and who export their services internationally. So the BIM adoption, uh, the BIM enable program. I recently rang the local enterprise office in NACE where I live and I pretended I was a, a small contractor who started to work with BIM and could they help me in some way and really the answer I got was not what I was hoping to hear. Uh, they could give me a voucher for 500 euros if I could fill in this 10-page document and so on and so forth. So local enterprise offices, I hope, will have a responsibility to help local business. Again, apologies for the, for the quality here. This region is part of nine regions in Ireland. You're part of 19 regions in the UK. We want local champions to come forth. Um, we need greater collaboration with these nine champions. We want to include you in our application for, with CETA to apply for funding to help this region. So that's the whole idea, that we work together. Um, and I think the regions could well sit very nicely into the HEIs and into the professional industry groupings in your region. 
Um, because that passage that I highlighted there says that there's a clear vision to be set uh, to communicate and foster a regional cluster of BIM communities of practice throughout Ireland. So the roadmap recognises this. Now, you've heard of these people, yeah? UK BIM Alliance. They're doing exactly what we're doing. They are transitioning at the moment through BIM. Um, and they have 19 communities. They have a BIM academic forum. They have a technology group. They have all sorts of BIM projects on legal, security, data, training. And they have fantastic resources. So we need to work with the UK BIM Alliance and not reinvent the wheel. And I think that's something that we need to start thinking about, how we could work more closely with the UK, despite Brexit. Okay, so that's the little, that's my kind of bit on the roadmap. So I suppose send it to your students, you know, disseminate it across your, your supply chains, get the message out there that, you know, that we're, we're, we're trying to, we're putting our house in order. I just wanted to touch base on this event, uh, which has taken place uh, in November. It's something new to us in a way, CETA, in that we want to put on a showcase on uh, the latest technologies used in construction. You know, smart machinery, smart products, whatever it might be, and so on. So uh, put it in the diary, come to Dublin, educate yourself for the latest technologies, experience how you can use these digital tools, engage and listen to some of the global experts. We're hoping to bring over some big names from around the world again. Um, uh, to speak about uh, digitization. Okay, so just to summarize, the roadmap is out. Um, my message is uh, we need this leadership platform to be inclusive. So the people around the National BIM Council need to have a passion for this, uh, but they also we need to make sure that we reach out to all the various stakeholders. We need funding. Many of you may not be aware, but the BICP project ceased to exist uh, in December with no, with no funding was forthcoming. So I'm fighting every opportunity to get funding back uh, into this roadmap. Uh, there is going to be a centre of excellence for digital construction. I think Lean needs to be part of this because, you know, there is the LCI group. There's CETA. So I think, and there's, of course, there's the CIF Digital 4.0 group, this all has to come together into one unitary um, force. Uh, I think the government are getting smart. This roadmap, by the way, has, 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 um, has been downloaded, I think, about 1,500 times already. And many of the international governments around the world have actually made reference to it and articles have been written about it and how, 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 how simple and how uh, you know, inspiring the roadmap is. But the big message is we need to work together, work collaboratively. So I hope that's giving you a sense of what's, what's happening. And uh, I think uh, within the next month or two, I think things will become clearer. But we need to you know, get the regions moving and uh, see if we can get some funding into the regions as well. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.